Aloha and welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Today's episode, part two, be phenomenal or be forgotten in 2020. Inclusion is a currency of the future. Sister Power's guest, best-selling author, Dr. Kimberly R. Kelly. Kimberly is an anesthesiologist and medical acupuncturist specializing in anesthesia, acupuncture, pain management, and medical stimulation. She is CEO and founder of Core Wellness Healing. Dr. Kelly was a recipient of the Trailblazer Award at the annual awards luncheon hosted by the Council on Concerns of Women Physicians. That's the medical, National Medical Association. Most recently, Kimberly was nominated by Pacific Edge Magazine Business Woman of the Year. Dr. Kelly, welcome back to Sister Power. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. It's always a pleasure to be here. Glad you're here. Mm -hmm. I, and you're definitely one phenomenal woman. <laughs> Thank so you. So this is Thank perfect you. for part two. <laughs> so you were here before. Yes. And you're a best-selling author. Yes. And I love your book. We talked about the book, The Road to Mana. And tell us just a little about a little bit about the road to mana, finding healing, happiness, and power on the road to life. <laughs> so this is a book that I wrote in trying to get a message across. And basically, it's a story. As you know, in Hawaii, we like to talk story. So it's a story about a sage, a wise woman who's known throughout the world for her healing powers and five people from all different walks of life come to her retreat that happens to be on the big island and they're there for a five day retreat and they learn from her and from themselves on how to heal holistically using the mind, the body, the spirit. Oh, I love that. You know, Hawaii is just so healing. I call it the bus stop to heaven living here. Oh. And yeah, and they say that it adds 10 years to your life. I believe that. You believe I, that? I, I truly believe that. And the reason being is because I came here 15 years ago, and I came in the midst of personal, a personal transition and a professional burnout. And I had heard of the healing waters of Hawaii, and I came looking to see if it was able to help me find my place. And so I don't know if I was looking for Tai Chi or Chai Tea, but I found it. And I found a way to catch my breath. And it's the healing powers of Hawaii that have made all the difference for me. Oh, wow. Well, what do you, how do you support resiliency in your own life? So a lot of the techniques and tools I use are actually from the book. Because it was, the, as I said, my journey. It was a journey for me to come here and to, to survive and to thrive. And it was the things that I knew for myself. It was the walking in the mountains, the fresh, beautiful air, the breeze on my back, walking in the water, letting the water wash away, the waves wash away my troubles, if you will. It was those things that helped me to heal. So that's, I think, in order to have resiliency or to get good results, you have to have good resources. And so the resources that we outline in the book are very, very helpful, and they were beneficial to me, so much so that I wanted to share them with others. And so that was one of the motivating factors for me to write the book. Oh, that's wonderful. I remember when they were, um, the National Medical Association yes. Yes. honored you uh, in July. Thank you. And you gave a powerful speech. Beside this keynote speaker, you and the <laughs> keynote speaker blew the house down. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your speech. You gave us some wonderful tips, women, wonderful tips about moving forward, the feel-good moment, sure. movement. Sure, sure, sure. So I had a friend, and it was my best friend. And she was, our lives were parallel. We were both physicians. We had three children. We had um, been married to physicians. And we had even planned to have these retreats, one here in Hawaii and the other in Tennessee. We had a plan, and we were working that plan. But she died. Mm. And I was angry when she died. And I didn't understand why she died, because we had a lot of work to do. And so what I know is that she died of heart disease. And heart disease is the number one killer of Americans in general, but specifically women, and even more importantly, women of color. And she died. And she died because she did everything for everybody. 
She worked hard at work. She came home and she worked hard. She took care of her uh, uh, aging parents. And so to me, she died from neglect. She didn't take care of herself. And if we, as women, you're a phenomenal wim woman as well, and if we don't learn to take better care of ourselves, we may end up just like her. So we've got to take the time. We've got to get a little selfish. We've got to put our own seatbelt on first if we are to thrive and survive. I like that because women, we want to be superwoman all we the do. time. We do. And it's okay not to be, to take care of yourself, as you, as you so eloquently put it. Right. Well, oftentimes it's considered selfish if we take care of mm -hmm. ourselves. You know, people um, say, oh, you're just being selfish, but you're not. Because if you don't take care of yourself, who will? And you can take better care of others if you take care of yourself first. You can, because then you, you're giving your very, very best. Well, you thrive so, when you take care of yourself. That's right. That's, a, that's one thing. Well, you know, I know you, you spoke about your friend dying. And yes. my question to you, mm -hmm. can you describe a low moment in your career and what you did to sustain yourself? I guess that was one of your, one of your low moments. <laughs> that was one of my low mo moments, actually. There, there have been many, <laughs> but that was just one of them. Another one is, uh, as you know, I'm an anesthesiologist um, in one of the local hospitals here. And I can recall vividly, like it was just last Friday, I was working uh, with an OBGYN physician. Those are those physicians who bring life into this world. And we were doing a hysterectomy on a lady and we were finishing up. And we were just talking shop, you know, oh, how are your children doing? And we were talking about the Cal Dallas Cowboys. That was his favorite team. Yeah. Two days later, we get a code blue. A code blue is when there's an emergency and everybody rushes. And there was a code blue in the OB department. And there he was hanging by his own belt from the ceiling. He committed Dead. suicide? Dead. And so... I did the last case with him, and I wondered if there's something that I could have said to him, if it's something that I could have made a difference and something I would have done or, 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 or said, and, and I felt sad mm. by that. And so that was a low moment in my life. And because of that, again, that gave me more motivation and encouragement, again, to write the book, let's do something about that. Because one of the secrets that we don't know about, or you may not be aware about, is that burnout is huge in the healthcare profession amongst nurses, amongst physicians and PAs. It's actually the number one cause of death of physicians. So we have, you know, heal or heal thyself, we have got to take better care of ourselves as well. So it's not just phenomenal women, it's, it's any of those professionals who are really trying to take care of others, those who have a healing heart. We have to learn to take care of ourselves first. Well. This show is about be phenomenal or be forgotten That's in 2020. It. That's it. So it's about taking care of yourself. That's right. Because if you're if you're dead and you haven't taken care of yourself, you know how what 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 benefit are you? Yeah. Right. <laughs> how impactful can you be? Well, what do you consider to be your greatest accomplishment? My greatest accomplishment, I, it, it would have to be actually. Um, I've done a lot of wonderful things uh, in my life, and I'm very very proud of them. But Probably being a mother yeah. uh, would be, I would say, number one. Um, number two would be being a grandmother. <laughs> Rubbing it. <laughs> but then number three would be actually um, establishing our company, Core Wellness Healing, and uh, because that's like a baby to me. That's our, I'm, it's, we're still in startup mode, and we're just trying to make a difference. We help heal the mind, the body, the spirit. We use Eastern modalities with Western modalities, and we bridge that with counseling. Well, let's talk about core wellness healing. Yes. What does core wellness healing, what is your mission statement? Uh -huh. And what does core stand for? <laughs> okay. We had this conversation before. <laughs> we, we, we did. Uh, the C-O-R-E is the is core. And core stands for the center of restorative energy. Because everything starts with the core. And so that's what we wanted our foundation to be. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. And what I'm excited about is Core Well and Healing is having an inaugural event. Yes, we are. Thursday, November the 15th. Friday. Friday, 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 Friday November, November the 15th. 15th. Yes. And there's the invitation. And I would, I would tell everyone 
to contact Dr. Kimberly Kelly at Kim at CoreWellnessHealing.com. Immediately, it's, <laughs> it's, it's limited seating. Very Everyone's limited. going to come after work because this is what we decide to have it. We're having it at the Honolulu Design Center. Yes. And it's going to be at the Bamboo Gardens yes. on the second floor. On the second floor. So yep. this is a time where people can come after work and just relax. Correct. This is a way that we can help heal ourselves. Um, we are very busy, but why not? Let's just get out, let's unwind, let's regenerate, let's rejuvenate, let's have community. Ooh. <laughs> Revive. <laughs> yeah. Collaborate. We Collaborate can engage. And engage. Oh, and, and start out together. Yeah, and it's going to be so wonderful because you're going to have refreshments, and you just added a wonderful piece to this event. <laughs> yes, we did. We added Jason. Uh, Gay. Gay. Saxophonist Jason, Jason Gay. Jason Gay will be there with us, and he's excellent, a fabulous musician, and so he'll be serenading us throughout the evening. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I'm so glad he was available <laughs> to squeeze you in. So what lessons has your work life taught you? Well, many valuable lessons. I think number one is taking care of myself first. Um, it's easy for me to say, it's easy for us to preach, it's a mindset. Um, but more than that, like as, as I mentioned earlier, if we have the right resources, then you can get the right results. And for me, it was exercising and working out, and that's not really what I did in Ohio at all. I didn't do very much of that, but being in Hawaii just makes it so free and so easy. I mean, we just have this aloha spirit that, and the weather, of course, that really accommodates those types of activities. So. With, um, with our company, there are five, oh, we'll say seven, actually. We've expanded it. It was five modalities, now it's kind of like seven, but it's the movement, you know, just getting out. When we know, we know that we should be taking those 10,000 steps, but if we don't, how about three? Mm. Just the little things that can help. Maybe just go outside for lunch, or just walk around your building. Just get some fresh air and, and sort of get out of the office, if you will. So there's movement, there's exercise. If you can do strength training, that's awesome. And then we talk about nutrition, and we talk about yoga, mindfulness, movement, and we also talk about, um, oh, what is that last one? Oh my goodness, acupuncture. Acupuncture? Yeah, acupuncture, and the reason why we include that is because acupuncture is very cost-effective, it's beneficial, it's evidence-based. I'm actually a medical acupuncturist as well, and so it's a way that we can get away from that pharmaceutical-based uh, model that we have in uh, Western medicine. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, when we come back, Dr. Kelly, after a short break, yes, we'll continue. Be absolutely. phenomenal or be forgotten. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about, human stories about law and life. Aloha. Hello, I'm Mufi Hanneman. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101, where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. It's been great for us in the past. We need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back to Sister Par. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. And this is part two of Be Phenomenal or Be Forgotten in 2020. Dr. Kimberly Kelly, Kelly is here as our <laughs> guest. I mean, we were talking about so many wonderful things. My mind is racing sure, because sure. there's so much joy. What brings you joy? Wow, bring, uh, joy is when I'm outside, when I'm with Mother Nature, when I'm swimming in the water, uh, as I said, it washes all my cares away. And I didn't learn to swim. I'm from Ohio, which is landlocked, and I really didn't learn to swim until I moved uh, to Hawaii. And that has made all the difference in my life, learning to swim in the ocean, 
And you know, we, here and I, I, I'm from Ohio as well. I, That's right. I have been here for so long. We all have this conversation. And I still need to get out there and, and swim. My husband's an excellent swimmer. And, it, and people say, you are on the island and sharing you. But I love hanging out by the pool. That's right. And going to the beach and getting that suntan, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Another question, you know, you're the best-selling author of The Road to Mana. How do you, how do we thank people who shape who we are and who we become. So I think I, I heard a speech by um, Oprah, and an, uh, but it was taken from Maya Angelou. And Maya Angelou said that I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. And what that means to me is I'm here because of the sacrifices, because of the tears, the blood, sweat, and tears that my foremothers and forefathers have shared with me. And so my grandmother lived to be 100 years old, and she picked cotton. And my mother is from the South, and she had a long, hard road. And I know that every day that I do something, I'm not saying that things don't happen to me that yeah. discourage me. It happens all the time. But no, I have to do this. It's not for me. It's for, it's for my foremothers and my forefathers who I stand on their shoulders. And it's for the next legacy, my grandchildren. Absolutely. And their grandchildren. And their grandchildren. So we have to plant trees now. Nobody said it was easy, but yeah. you're promised. The universe promises you that, that, that you'll get there. You just yeah, have to keep it, your faith. And I'm glad you brought that up. You know, you know, my mother's no, no longer here. Sorry and me. I was just, oh, mom, this, this, this. She said, baby, I want you to read this book 30 years ago. What people think of you is none of my business by Carol <laughs> Cole Whitaker. And that set the stage. Right. For me to love me, that's right, and give back to others because when you give, it's so rewarding. It is. It, it really is, is rewarding. It is. Any other professional pursuits in the horizon? Uh, absolutely, yes, we do. Core Wellness Healing. We're always on the move. We usually try to have an event at least once every six weeks. Uh, we have the event coming up November the 15th that you just spoke about. Yeah, Friday, November uh, the 15th, the networking event, 5.30 to 7.30, is at the Honolulu Design Center at Bamboo Garden. And it's free parking. You're going to have refreshments, cocktails, and let's talk about the entertainment again. It's just <laughs> last night you just booked that entertainment. We did. It's Mr. Jason Gay. Jason will be with us serenading us with his saxophone. He's an outstanding musician in the community, and uh, we're look very excited to have him along with us. In addition to some wonderful entertainment, food, uh, beverage, it'll be a wonderful, wonderful time. So please, please come out and join us. Absolutely, and there's some wonderful giveaways, too. Absolutely. You know, we always like to receive a little something. Yes. And then in January, oh, yes. in January, we are having a mini retreat. Uh, stay tuned, that's gonna be at a place uh, soon to be announced. And in March, we are having a five-day retreat on uh, Kauai. Oh, so, that sounds yeah. fabulous. Right. So, we'll, so the ladies who attend will be treated <laughs> like a queen. Absolutely. And I always tell women, crown yourself. Yes, because if you don't, who will? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> what are a few affirmations to live by? Um, actually, you have one of them right okay. there. Okay. <laughs> you know, and I, I love these. I can, I've already sent out two. But you, Maya Angelou is one of She's, my favorites. Yes, she and is. And she says, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. And you say... I said, there is no greater agony than letting an untold story bury you. So tell your story and speak your truth. And what I mean by that is we all have challenges, trials, and tribulations that affected, have affected who we are and, and, and how we thrive. But if we keep that in, that can be dis-ease. Dis-ease becomes disease. And so the issues are in our tissues. And so we've got to find ways to just share with others. And in sharing with others our journey, and it's just a journey, we can also empower, empower those who are looking up to us. Yeah. So what advice, is, we're talking about others, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to your younger self? Wow. I would say to my younger self, I would say, Kim, they called me Kimmy in the day. Okay. But I would just say, Kim, just be yourself and listen to your heart. Go to a quiet place and just be still. And in that stillness, the answers will come. The universe has the answers. And the universe has given all the answers to you to heal yourself, 
to do whatever it is you want to do. It's giving you the power. Don't let your power go. Maintain your power. Hold on to it. Don't give it to a spouse. Don't do, do give it to a friend. Don't give it to your employer. Maintain your power. Maintain that. And that's what I would tell my younger self, to listen to my own heart. Don't think about it, because you can think yourself and talk yourself out of so many things. Listen to your heart. Your, your heart will never fool you. It will never, you'll never go wrong but if, you, if you listen to your heart. I believe in that. And that's why I always tell people, I'm not here to negotiate my worth. There you go. You know, you, I, I know what I'm worth. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. you don't live these many years yes. of not gaining some type of wisdom that's and it. confidence. That's it. And that's so important. It is. We have some great conversations <laughs> when you and I get together for lunch. And I think I, I tell women, have lunch with your girlfriends more. It's yes. so healing. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, that is one of the things that we talk about. We talk about nutrition. But nutrition doesn't necessarily come on a plate. We talk about the five food, food groups. Everybody knows about that. But the nutrition that feeds us is the nutrition that feeds our spirits. And that's the relationships, the companionship. That's what feeds our soul. You can, you can, you can have a whole plate of food, and, but if your girlfriend is there, you, don't, you barely take a bite. Yeah. Because yeah. you're so into each other. Wow. We're talking that's about the healing power. That's the healing power. <laughs> and I like one of the, another affirmation. Yes. The real growth will come in finding the other pieces of your life that will satisfy the hunger of your heart and quench the thirst of your soul. Elaborate on that. So, so there again, we all have it within our heart and it's within our soul. And so just reaching deep, finding deep, um, just listening to that small little voice. And that voice will never lead you astray. At least it hasn't led me astray. And I'm, I know, I know for a fact that if I had listened years and years ago, <laughs> To that little voice, <laughs> I'd be further ahead. And I'm doing fine. I'm grateful yeah. and I'm thankful. And I think that's most important, too, to have a heart of gratitude. And, you know, <laughs> we can never, um, I, I, I look at my fault failures sure. or my uh, hiccups, my Katrinas in sure. my life as, sure. a learning, as a learning lesson. That's it. Right. Just a speed bump. Yeah. Right. Just to slow you down. This is so you can pay attention, but not to stop you. No, never, <laughs> never give up. And you, never, never, ever. And those have been the greatest lessons. Those, when I was experiencing them, it was awful. But oh my goodness, ah. I learned so much from those lessons. I know. Who do you consider your greatest mentor, and why? I think uh, probably, uh, believe it or not, it would be my mother. And the reason why I be it my mother is because my mother was the eldest of six. And um, she initially joined the army because she couldn't afford to go to college. And then she married my dad, who was uh, also in the military. And then they educated six of us. And they, she, was an, she was, became a teacher, and my dad was an auto factory worker. But they worked very, very hard, and they valued education so that we could have the education. She didn't get her college degree until I was in middle school. And it was actually, I was helping her with her, she had algebra in college. I was taking the same classes in middle school. So I helped her. So she, uh, it's, it's my mom. You know, her, if she could do what she did with the six children and being married and providing for us a stable family with my dad, then certainly I could go on and achieve. I could go to medical school and do some of, and, and, and accomplish some of my dreams. So my mom was my role model for me. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. You know, it yeah. just... We have so much in common, and I think sisterhood is just an amazing accessory. Yes. That's exactly what yes. it is. Yes, yes. So let's talk a little bit, let's change gears and sure. go back and talk about your book. Oh, sure. Because I enjoyed reading it. I have it here, The Road <laughs> to Mana. There uh -huh. it is, The Road uh -huh. to Mana. Finding Healing, Happiness, and Power on the Road to Life. Give us some other insights about The Road to Mana. So as um one of the things I wanted to do was I, I kind of made a sort of a, um, oh, a little mnemonic off of Phenomenal. Ooh. And so I want to share that. And that's part of the things that Core Wellness Healing does. And the things that we share in Core Wellness Healing are actually the things that are in the book. And so the retreats that we have are actually mirror what's in the book. Okay. So you have to come to a retreat. So uh, <laughs> Phenomenal, Phenomenal Women That We Are. So Phenomenal, the P stands for purpose, passion, and practice self-care. The H stands for a healthy heart. Be authentic and transparent. One of the things that Sister says in the book is the issues are in your tissues. If you avoid conflict to keep the peace, you'll start a war within yourself. Ooh. Ooh. 
Oof. <laughs> yeah, I like that. You'll start a war with it. Continue. <laughs> okay, the E is for be engaging and energized. Be an educator of self-care. Find out what you can do for self-care. You need to get that massage. You deserve that massage. You do. You deserve to go to the spa. You do. M, uh, N. N stands for be non-apologetic for who you are and what you are. Uh, accept it, and it doesn't matter if anybody agrees. You accept who you are and get selfish in taking care of yourself. Self-care is so important, and that's not what we do enough. M stands for mentors. We all need mentors. Yes. You are a mentor to me. You've done some fabulous things in the community, Sharon, and I'm so excited for you, and, and thank you for having me on. Thank you. Um, we need to be mindful and mentally tough. We need to be magnificent. The M, um, that's the M. The E that stands for enthusiastic and be excited about the potential and the prosperity. The N stands for nutrition. We talked about primary and secondary nutrition. Feed your soul. The A stands for acupuncture as a real legitimate um, modality for, for healing and, and overall well health. And the L stands for leaders. As phenomenal women, we are leaders. But as we rise up to the top, sometimes it gets a little lonely up there. And loneliness, uh, the effect of loneliness on our mortality it has the same effect as uh, smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So we cannot be lonely. We need to be in community. And we need to do this together. And we can. Here we are. Doing I this love together. it. So that's phenomenal. Well, we, I think you need to put that somewhere. Let's make a flyer and okay. pass that out at, the, uh, at Sh your event. Sure. On Friday. Sure. sure. It's your event, the networking event, is Friday, Friday. November the 15th. Yes. 530 to 730. At the Honolulu Design Center, Bamboo yes. Garden. Jason Gay will be there, the saxophonist. And well, we will have a fabulous time. We're going to have a ball. <laughs> well, Dr. Kimberly R. Kelly. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Our phenomenal woman for today and always. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you, Sharon. On behalf of Think Tech Hawaii and Sister Power, I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.